Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilborn. I just want to welcome you to On the Radar, a live market update. We do these live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 12, correction, 1 o'clock Pacific time. And we're just waiting for the, um, waiting for it to come up on the, uh, there we go. Okay. Now I'm monitoring what's going on on the channel. Go ahead and get started. Okay, there is that handsome guy. He's all ready to go. I hope you had a really great weekend. A um, lot of interesting stuff going on over the um, over the last couple of days. Uh, we've basically had the markets doing a really nice rally. Um, however, there was always some potential hesitancy in this rally, and we'll see if that continues to uh, going forward. Uh, today, my tech tip is going to be talking a little bit about leveraged ETFs. If you've never used leveraged ETF, they are really, you know, excellent vehicles to, you know, basically grow wealth, wealth for wealth building, accelerating your wealth building by via the leverage aspect of it. But there are also some hazards and dangers you need to be aware of before you just go out there willy-nilly jumping on onto uh, what's going on with that. So what I'll do is I'll just highlight some of the items that could be causing you issues. Um, normally I start with the, um, the indexes and we'll jump back to the index here shortly. But uh, one of the stocks that I'll just highlight right off the bat Netflix. Netflix may be setting itself up for a really nice continued down, uh, downward slide. We have come up and we are testing into the moving averages. All the moving averages except the 200-day moving average are pointed down. Price action broke above the moving average, went up to this uptrending line here, and it appears to be kissing that trend line goodbye. We shall see if that, in fact, is the case. We, uh, the, uh, when you take a look at this, we have a shooting star in place, retesting uh, areas of resistance. And so I'll be looking to potentially trade this to the downside tomorrow. Uh, probably any type of a retrace up into today's wick, about the 528 level. Uh, I would want to be basically doing some kind of a uh, either a... Uh, Put spread, that would be a put debit spread or a call credit spread. Where are we anticipate it falling? Well, basically, all the way back down to about the at least the 485 level. We may also look at this for doing a uh, uh, just a straight, straight put. Uh, but the spreads, they, they work out pretty well. When you do a, and I, I got this on really, you know, uh, some of my studying, uh, of some of the great traders, and they talk about when you have a downside move, they, you anticipate them not lasting as long as other moves. Um, and hence, but to be more aggressive or more uh, violent to the downside. So you can go actually one strike price or maybe even sometimes two strikes prices in the money, depending on how wide the strikes are. Give yourself plenty of time, like, you know, go out, you know, three to six weeks and go ahead and buy a slightly out of the money put and what, let the price action go down and through that. So if I were to be buying a put, this is uh, this, I wasn't really planning on talking about this, but I will do it shortly. If I was planning on doing a put, I would be looking at it somewhere. Uh, where is it likely to move? Well, it's likely to move at least back down to the past lows at, at uh uh, 493, and so 4.9. Let's say 4.90. We're looking at 34 dollars worth of move. Go about midway, and so I could actually do and buy a 516 dollar or 515 dollar uh, put that expires in three to six weeks, and watch that down to the downside. And um, so that's one of the areas we'll be looking at for our uh, active trend trading premium members. Be watching your uh, uh, 
your text alerts because I, I looks like I'll be putting out an order on Netflix a little bit later today. So let's jump back up to where I would normally start, which is the S&P. Hope you like that one. Uh, S&P. We do not have a reversal signal on the S&P. S&P came and went up and made a higher high, but then mostly spent most of the rest of the day selling off to the downside. <clears throat> this breakout level here at uh, the 394 level is still intact. Uh, if we bust down below that, look out for price action to fall all the way back down to about the 20 or uh, uh uh, lower. What what other things can we say about the S and P? Well, things on the S and P we can say is it is demonstrating higher high here on the the uh, TSI. It is not a higher high. It is basically negatively divergent. It is not reversed yet. So I really can't say I have a momentum shift. All it is is giving us a clue that. The momentum to push all the way up in and brew the breakout was not as high as when it hit over here. Excuse me a second. <clears throat> there we go. And so, okay, so that's what we're looking at on the S&P. Drop on down to the Qs. The Qs actually, the NASDAQ had a nice rally. However, comma, uh, we had a nice rally back up into a level of resistance uh, right there at the 324 level. And then it's putting in close to being, uh, it's, not, it's not quite a shooting star because the body isn't quite low enough, but certainly it is a spinning top doji the, with the longer wick being on top means that more sellers, sellers had more control of today's session to drive prices lower. How would I look to trade this potentially tomorrow? Let me blow this up a little bit and I'll give you an idea. Uh, if prices open above today's body, the slight, you know, uh, so they are all the way up to the, to the uh, uh, top of the wick, my trigger to get into a potential trade would be breaking down through the low of the body. The low of the body is basically where it, op where it closed today. And it closed today at 320, 58, 320, 58. And that would be my trigger to go ahead and jump on something to the downside on uh, the, the NASDAQ. What about, uh, what else can I do on that? If I wanted to, I could flip over and say, hey, I want to buy shares of, shares of SQQQ. Okay, again, not a hammer, but close to it, but we're down here close to close to support, and we'll watch and see if we, in fact, bounce back up from that. The run all the way from the, today's low back up to, to the highs, what would that be? That would be a move of approximately 29%, uh, excellent move. So brings us on over to the Russell IWM. Now the Russell is, the Russell broke out, uh, continued its breakout on Monday and pulled on up and broke out above this 230, um, let's see, $230 and 32 cents. It tested that today, it pushed down below that and then popped back above. Uh, we'll, we will watch this as long as it doesn't violate, you know, get down below the 20. I mean, it may bounce all the way down to the 20, and that may give us a trigger to get into a trade on IWM. Uh, well, or it may just say, you know what, I'm done going down. It's a one-day uh, kind of a little <clears throat> bit of a one-day correction. I'm going to bounce up from there. We'll see. Uh, for our... Uh, and here's why I want to point out this huge difference. As you see, on IWM, representing the Russell, uh, we basically are testing right at that breakout area. However, due to what's called contango and a little bit of backwardation on the leverage ETF, which is TNA in this case, it's a three-time leverage that emulates the Russell bullish side, 
And look what it's done, okay? There we go. Same Fibonacci, same breakout area. Tested it yesterday, but look what happens today. It busts on down below that Fibonacci level and that breakout area. That's the direct result of what? Of contango. And, and contango is a, is a um, an event that takes place because as the uh, uh, companies that, that basically use the, uh, that was my wife screaming because the smoke alarm just went off. I just let you know everything is fine. Um, but uh, the, the contango is because they have to buy instruments or derivatives that will guarantee them a three times uh, uh, the daily movement of the underlying, which in this case is the Russell or the IWM, um, that as they switch those out, when they expire, there's a, 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 a potential for the price they have to pay to be exceeding what it would have been if it was just the non-leveraged. And so by having to pay more, it actually reduces the value of TNA. So one of the ways we avoid you know, that issue is one, uh, watch the length of time that we hold the leverage ETFs. What I've found is that normally uh, you can hold to up, up to about 90 days, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, but around 90 days. And so if you're holding a, uh, a leverage to ETF for 90 days, uh, you probably want to look at taking some of your profits off the table and reinstituting the position once you get a setup. The other way you combat uh, contango is <clears throat> only trade uh, really high quality leverage ETFs. The leverage ETFs uh, that we watch, of course, are on the indexes, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell. And then I use five, four sectors, uh, which includes um, uh, the biotechs, the oil exploration and mineral exploration, the uh, um, uh, financials, and what's the other one? Oh, the, the semiconductors. Those are the four sectors that I follow. Uh, and so basically, if you're following really good sectors, the contango isn't quite as, you know, as prevalent. Uh, and the other thing, be very careful when you are trading the inverse. The inverse, especially if the the underlying entity, like let's say the uh, the if you're trading the S and P, the underlying entity being the S and P, and you're trading the inverse of that, which is S P X U. If the spiders or the S and P is in a strong uptrend, it seems to contribute or amplify the impacts of contango. So uh, just watch it when you're trading the. Uh, the inverse leverage ETFs. And in situations like that, I would go for short spurts. If I get up, pick up 10, 15, 20% on the leverage uh, inverse ETF, go ahead and take some of the profits off the table or all the profits off the table and reset. Um, that's what we've seen in our uh, testing and investigation going through the years. So let's go ahead. I wanted, we talked about Netflix already. Uh, a couple of the stocks, excuse me, just a second. I have got it. Frog in my throat. Hold on. Here are two entities that I am just keeping my eye on. I, I like them uh, to the upside longer term. And one of them is uh, uh, Marathon. Uh, this is a crypto trade. As you see, they snuck in earnings on us. And their earnings was a up until like yesterday, earnings were showing they were going to be on the 23rd of, the, of uh, uh, March. Clearly, they were today. It breaks down. It is still in a nice uptrend. So I will be basically, uh, I would like Marathon, again, this is a higher high. So watch it pull back. It may pull back to about the 34, which is about the $33, $32.50 level. And I will put it, I've got it, as you can see, I've got that diamond right there. I've got an alert set. So if I get back down to that level, that may be my trigger for a bullish trade. 
and I, again, I think crypto and the uh, uh, blockchain is going to continue to to do well. The other thing I like about Marathon is they have really great weekly options to be trading. So it gives you a couple of different uh, flavors for how you want to trade this. The other entity that I'm looking at trading is, oops, where'd it go? I like the electric vehicle space. Um, Tesla's, Tesla's looking for a, a, a bottom. Okay, well, it's looking for, it basically it started to sell off today. We'll see if it drops any further than that. And let me move that. And as you can see, uh, it dropped down a little bit, and now it is starting, you know, hopefully we'll push back up through these moving averages. If it fails here at the, uh, the uh, eight-day moving average, and it takes out today's low. Watch for a drop all the way in. We could get a drop all the way back down to where the price actually, where the, the buyers coming in before at about the 629 to 650 level. And so that's what I'll look at for a pullback into that area and then a push higher. This is a classic type of move that we see all the time is that we've had this nice correction down to the downside. Uh, Tesla put on about a 20% uh, Move to the downside. It is now rebounded. There's your one leg. Did not take out the past high, so this is, does still count as a lower high. Now we are basically, let's see what kind of a, a, a pullback we get. If we get a pullback just down into, a, you know, about that where, about 50% to 60, 6.8%, and then a move back up, this will be telling. That will be telling. Uh, one of the things that I like to do on these type is I also like to check them out on the intraday chart and the weekly chart. The uh, weekly chart, there we go. As you can see on Tesla, it's got strong support. It is still coming up through this area. And so it may just stop right there at that, that fib right there, which is the 50% on the move from here to here. The other reason I want to take a look at the weekly chart, it gives me a better appreciation for what's the bigger picture. It's important to know the big picture on the individual uh, in, uh, individual stocks. The, uh, so, hey, if you are interested, I am going to be doing a presentation to, this evening for the Bay Area Money Makers. It is a IBD meetup group that I have the great fortune to lead. If you want to get in on that, just go over to uh, the uh, BAM meetup group. You can register for it and get the Zoom link there. Uh, or you can basically go to bayareamoneymakers.com, Bay Area get the link there, or basically sign up and get the link there. And then uh, additionally, next, I think it's, and I'll double check this, I think on the 25th, I'm doing a, a presentation for the Delaware IBD Meetup Group. I'm really excited about doing this one. We're going to be talking about how to use three different time frame charts to refine your entry triggers uh, so that you can basically get more profits out of the whole thing. So with that, I'm going to say aloha, God bless, and remember, you can always put in a stock and say, hey, Dennis, take a look at this particular stock, uh, but until tomorrow, aloha, and God bless everybody.